Hello, welcome to Furious Driving and we're back with the Mondeo and it's a frosty start today. We're bringing this car back from the dead but right now it feels like I wish I wasn't because it was minus two last night and everything is thick with frost including the doors, the door handles, the locks and the doors that are frozen solid so I can't even get into the car to begin working on this thing today. But once I'm inside the plan is to try and fix the brakes because last time we got the car started but we couldn't make it stop. Let's try and brake in and then crack on. Well, I put some de-icer on the window rubbers, that made no odds. So now I've gone and got hot air gun. Try and warm this through a little bit. Not a good way to start a day when there's limited daylight and warmth. And hilariously, when I was moving the Rover 200 VI, without thinking, I just touched the electric window button. And guess what? It broke the mechanism while I was doing it, so now I've got to repair that mechanism again. I can't open the door, but I can tow it with a Freelander so I can at least I can get to where I think the problem is and work on that. And then the sun can defrost the door and I can sort that out later on. I'll put some silicon grease on that so I won't do it again. Okay, so this has been a slower start to the day than I had planned, but at least the car is now in a position where I can start working on it because I think that the problem is going to be around here somewhere because looking at the splatter pattern on the driveway, it appears to be this front right corner. So while, we, while the sunlight does its thing on this door, maybe defrost it enough for us to get back into the thing, I can start jacking it up and having a look at what's made a hole in itself. Um, using this thing, which is an amazing accessory if you're new to the channel, this is a little hockey puck with a slot in it from Draper, which sits over your, um, which is over your pinch weld and means that as you jack the car, it doesn't crush the pinch weld. Super duper handy. Now my plan for today, as well as sorting out the brakes, is to do as many other pre-MOT service items as I can, so on Monday I can drop this thing off for an MOT and see, well, if it goes through or not. Now one thing I'm missing is, ugh, yuck, a set of matching hubcaps. I am searching online for a set of proper Ford hubcaps. Someone has very kindly offered me a set of 14 inch wheels with good tires on. Someone's also offered me a set of gear alloys, but I really like to keep it kind of as standard as possible. So stick with the LX uh, wheel trims, but I am trying really hard to find a set of genuine LX wheel trims because the ones that are on the other three corners are kind of uh, aftermarket knockoff LX wheel trims. Oh no. So if anyone has a lead on a set of 14 inch LX style wheel trims from Mark II Mondeo, that's like 96 to 2000 I think. Then give me a shout. Drop me an email, that's the, the best way of getting hold of me. I mean it's not essential for getting the car running but it would be really nice. And I will just mention that all the tools I'm using are on an Amazon affiliate link in the description down below. Well that came off easy so we're nice and safe to go underneath the car. Let's look around and see what we've got. First of all, we've got, as I suspected, a new drop link here on this side, which is a nice sign of maintenance. Um, we've got actually a really nice looking flexi hose. I thought that might be the obvious thing to be changing. Then we've got a, ooh, original brake hard line. I can't follow that back, it's inside the engine bay and I can't get to that because I can't open the door. Then we've got a wet patch just there. So I'm gonna guess that's from the brake fluid leaking. It's gotta be up here somewhere, I think. Oops. Would you look at the state of this wheel here? Um, so I can see what might be the problem on that front hose over there. It's a hard line going up into the bodywork into the engine bay. Um, it looks slightly damp, I can't see any damage though, but as I can't get into the engine bay just yet, I'll have a look at the back wheel as well, because it's definitely on the right hand side where the issue is. I will check all four wheels while I'm here though. Okay, here at the back, we've got a fairly good looking uh, hard line down to the brake hub. We've got a decent looking flexi hose. We've got dry looking brake line going under the car. It goes forward behind the axle, but again, all looks good. After quite a few minutes of, well, actual sunshine, plus fiddling with the locks and everything else. Oh, I'm in, I'm in, oh, wow, okay, bizarre. No idea what happened then, but we're in, thank goodness. 
it looks like the driver's door is deadlocked. Yeah, it seems like the deadlocks have activated and won't come off, but at least I'm in through the passenger door. One door in, but into gears can't roll. Ugh. Get into the bonnet. Let's not put the key in there. We'll figure out the rest of this later. Can I even see the brake lines? There's a lot of grot down there. Let's get my spider removing stick. Not I'm putting any overkill on the uh, spider removal process. Uh -huh, there's some fluff down there so I can't see the lines. Hang on. All this stuff I just scraped out of here. There's definitely been a rodent nest in the engine bay, so that's why. Well, it's not why anything. That is just their disgustingness. That's why there's some gnawing to that up there. The little nest down here by the CV boots. So, at least that's now free of that. I'm gonna get a broom to get rid of that in a minute because that's disgustingness. Don't want that anywhere near us. Um, brake lines though, need to follow that back. So that goes through just there. Where does it come out? Okay, I think I need to take this panel here off to go and find that. Right, let's get this panel off. See what we can see. Yuck, more rodent evidence. Yuck, more rodentiness. Gross. Most I'm finding this and getting out the engine bay rather than it catching fire when the car's on the move. A section here, and then it goes back across there behind the steering rack, and then up into that mess thing. I think though. I don't know, that's the only place that feels rough. Ah, filled it with fluid, pumped it up, and it's squirting out from behind the fuel tank. Ah, ah, ah. There's this straight section here that goes into the tank, just on the, or behind the tank just there, and comes out. Where did it come out? Back there somewhere, that's easy to get to. Not. At least it's a straight bit that's fairly easy to get to. I am going to have to move, put the car back on the ground and move it forwards because I can't work with it in this spot here. But at least I can actually roll it around now. The front end of the car is all fine. I'm not going to worry about anything being leaky or horrible down there. And I don't have to worry about any more rat's nests down here because I've cleared them all out. All right, everything clear out of the way. I can see the uh, brake fluid running out quite happily from the back of the car. I don't know why it wouldn't open. I think it decided to deadlock itself and then not undeadlock itself. It wasn't actually the frost at all unless the cold was just making the locks act funny. Now let's see if this car will actually start on its own this time. Because it's been so cold, the seats haven't actually dried out properly yet. Haven't bissled them yet either. No. Someone commented or sent me a message saying that with these ETICs, if you hold the throttle down, it doesn't start, but I'm... Oh, nearly there. Oh, come on, car. You can go off a car, you know. So I'm slightly clutching at straws here. I've just put a brand new battery on there because it wasn't cranking very well. Even the jump starter wasn't doing it very well. That is a good battery from the 420 GSI though. So I wonder if it's a deadlocking situation. It's throwing things. Oh, come on, you stupid piece of poop. Ugh. Why's the rear wiper coming on now? I haven't touched the rear wiper. Okay, we're going to have to hardwire this in again. Stupid thing. Instant start, no problem. I need to move it forward like an inch. Just to get enough room to get the jack behind it. That'll do. Now, why on earth is that rear wiper doing stuff? 
Now after the last video there were loads of comments from people saying had I checked the relays, had I checked the inertia switch, had I checked this. Uh, when James the auto electrician came around he checked everything, he checked every circuit on the car in enormous detail and people saying they thought I'd opened out the, the connector by shoving the uh, multimeter prongs in there. I didn't really shove them in there, I just kind of pushed them onto it so it's not really as aggressive as people were suggesting. Um, so no, there's voltage getting there but not in enough power as people are suggesting so maybe there's a bad earth somewhere else in the car. Anyway, we'll come back to that later on. I've just had a delivery from the local motor factor people. Uh, I was feeling so positive after the end of the last video when the car actually started. I went and ordered some antifreeze, a cabin filter because that's going to be disgusting through there and I can't run my uh, cabin vapour bomb thing without being clogged up. An oil filter because I thought you know it deserves it and a fuel filter which is, well, down in this corner anyway, so maybe I'll do that today anyway. Now it won't start again, I'm feeling less positive about the thing, but let's get this brake line sorted out. Okay, so I have been looking further and further into the car, and what I've seen is there are actually two brake lines that run up here behind the petrol tank, um, they both have a union up here as well, which is useful, um, and they both come out in front of the uh, car, the tank as well. Just need to work out which one is actually the problem. I thought I was going to have to undo these very tight, rusty unions up here by the wheel, but I don't. I need to work out which one is leaking. A steady drip of fluid here to maybe give me a clue. Yeah, it's this pipe here. Wiggling this one, it's this one, which is thankfully the lower one of the two. So I guess it's gone probably where the clamp is actually. Um, so I'll cut that off down here and I'll bolt it up there and then hopefully it'll be an easy repair. I was going to say this is going to be an absolute nightmare to do because it's so hard not on a ramp but thankfully I've got quite a high jack here so it might be alright. I suspect you won't be seeing much because once I got my hand in there you won't be able to see a thing. Um, but yeah that's a 13 I think and a 12 probably and I've put some bulldog on there to try and I'll loosen the bolts up, look through the bolts, the nuts and bolts, the connection. And um, before you comment saying this would be easier with uh, brake line spanners, I'm aware of that, but guess where they are? Over in the barn. <sighs> Glad I've got my goggles on. Safety third, folks. Safety third. Let's try an 11 on that. That's better. Yeah, that's oh, actually freed off. Blimey. Thank you, Bulldog. And thank you, not rusty car. Now, where is the brake cutter? The line cutter. Oh, right. So this one, I'm going to cut. Well, it's going to be tricky to get a, a thing around it. Yeah. Uh, okay, now it's uh, pretty much through, I think, for the fact it's leaking everywhere. Come on, cut through, nearly there, I hope. Can't be much further. This actually even feels slippery and slimy inside the gloves. Oh, we're through, no, we're through, we've broken, yes, we are through, yes, we're through. Now we're just chucking oil everywhere. Okay, so we can try and catch as much of that as we can in a, in a drippy tray thing. Right now, let's get the old one out and have a look at it and how bad it really was. Oh, it fell in half, so that's pretty bad. Yeah, rusty as a, rotten as a pear, I think you'd phrase there. So, yeah, I'll make a nice new one that hopefully is not rusty. Uh, interestingly, this is exactly the same failure as the W123 had in its brake and fuel lines. Wherever it went through clamps holding the uh, lines to the chassis, that rotted through just there. So when I tried to turn it on, it gushed petrol on the floor. When I tried to stop the car, it gushed brake fluid on the floor. Interesting, things never change. Right, okay, let's try and assemble some new bits of breakage. I've got my um, flaring, I've got the flaring kit over there to do some flaring. <coughs> flaring we will go, a flaring we will go. Hey, hoody and you, a flaring we will go. This is easy on this bit. The one on the other side is gonna be a little trickier though. So I'm not quite sure how we'll accomplish that with ease. So that's one end. Now I just need to do the other. I'm going to use this uh, emergency joint thing for repairing brake lines. 
something is quite useful to remember is put the uh, the fastening thing on before you uh, flare it out, otherwise you've wasted your time. Just for a second I thought I'd not put it on there. Huh. So let's make sure that does actually work. Yep, that is good on that end. Now the difficult one is going to be flaring out the one on the underside of the car, because that's going to be really tricky to get to. <laughs> Quite a lot of brake fluid has fallen out in the meantime. Right, this is going to be deeply unpleasant. Oh, globits. This is where I'm going to decorate the inside of my sleeve with a lot of brake fluid, I reckon. Why well, is everything so much harder when it's not only in reverse, but stuff is running down your arm, which makes you want to not be here. Now I wish I hadn't topped up the fluid, but of course I had to top up the fluid, otherwise I'd never have found the hole. Damn. Again, super gross. Okay, right, let's get the uh, clampy bit in there. Oh, I la clampy bit. Is he la clampy bit? Yep, yeah, that's good. Okie dokie. Right, let's feed this one uh, through here. Looking it into various items along the way. Wow, why don't we go through? Oh, interesting to note, this um, came out in two pieces. It didn't come out in one piece with a thing on the end. Okay, that might be an issue. Might come through narrow in first though. There we go, yep, got it through, but have I got the connector through? No, I've not, of course I haven't. That would be too much to ask. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Am I going to have to cut the end off and remake it? Oh, I think I might have to, mightn't I? Isn't that fun? Or can I? Okay. Yeah, I think I can. I can squeak it around through. No, I can't. Not quite. Nearly, almost. But not quite, no. Nice idea. Didn't pay off. Oh. <laughs> Got it. Thank goodness for that. Okay, good. Now, let's connect all this rubbish up. Hope this connects up as it should. Uh, yep, that's good. So there we go, that is fixed. That is a new brake line up in there. I can't find the kind of brake uh, and clutch cleaner, so I can't give it a clean off at the minute. But there we have new metal copper pipe, shiny and fresh, not dripping oil everywhere, which is fantastic. I'll get now jack the thing up and do a brake bleed, and then hopefully this thing is ready to drive again, apart from the fact that the fuel pump no longer works once more. <laughs> See if I can undo these connectors. That one comes off easy. Does this one come off easy as well? Blimey, it do. Okay, let's change the fuel filter quickly. Oh yeah, these undo surprisingly easily. Is this the same? It's a Wix filter, so pretty decent quality. Yes, it is the same. That's always a relief when the box <laughs> opens up and you get a matching item come out. Cable tied in place. I'm sure that's absolutely fine. There we go. It's not a competition to see how many noxious fluids you can spill on me car. Oh, so I had a unit part on there. Oh, yuck, up my sleeve. Brilliant. Oh, it's, oh God, it's everywhere. Whenever I do Peter Griffin, I sound more like the alien in uh, American's Dad. Don't know why. And now I see why that was cable tied. A really nice fleece insulation lower base layer full of petrol now. Magic. Right, okay, so this is all done. I've put a cable tie on here. I need to find my snips so I can cut that table cable tie off with it so that at least won't fall off. Now, I do need to bleed the brakes, but I can't because even though I've soaked it in bulldog for the last couple of minutes, I can't turn the bleed nipple without any risk of it snapping so I'm gonna to have to leave that until probably tomorrow or Monday just marinating in 
penetrating oil so I can bleed this later on. I have, however, topped the canister up, the canister, the do ha hoo ha dilly, so we can give it a couple of pumps on here. Oh, and we have got a bit of pressure on the pedal now. Well, let's give it a few pumps. Obviously, it needs to be bled properly for that to do anything, really. Oh, so we've got a leak still. Make sure we've done it properly, that's what I'm doing here. Well, uh, I've just refilled and pressurised the system by pumping the pedal, and my first repair is holding fluid quite well. Is that quite well? It completely well. However, there's still a drip, which you can probably see down there. And I think you know as well as I do what that means. It means the other, slightly harder to reach pipe, has also got a hole in it. And I can actually see it when I shine a light down there, dripping. So, gonna have to go and repeat the process all over again. Ouch. Oh, so currently, I'm being stopped by a 30 year old plastic clip that will not undo. And it's not coming undone, there we go, it's free now. Can I lever out the fuel line? Yep, that's free, and that thankfully isn't rusty. And then the brake line as well, there we go. Okay, cool. And that has to be, I mean, that literally has to be what's rusty because there's nothing else up here to, uh, to be rusty. So, let's get myself my cuttery thing and prepare to get really covered in a, more stuff. Yuck. I think I've decided brakes are my new not least favourite thing to do. Oh, I haven't got a second one of those. Those jointy things. Oh yeah, I can feel the, yeah, it snapped. I've got the hole. Yep, that's definitely not much good. I see that the more it dribbles everywhere, the harder this job gets because it's just so slippery. It's like fighting a greased pig. It's really hard to hold on to this stuff and the temperature is suddenly just dropping dramatically while I'm out here. One end made up and that's on the car itself. That's like the, the messiest bit I think. So now I can make up the next bit. Okay, so I've made a connection on the car here. So now I can feed it up there, up there and connect it up and it'll only be leaking from one place, not several hopefully. Okay, so trying to connect the pipes up and my 11mm spanner has just gone on top of the fuel tank and I can't reach it to get it back. Ah, oh, thank goodness for the magnetic pickup tool. It even works sideways. Well, it's connected at that end. I had to make a new length because after I twisted it into shape it was that much too short. And the last bit is hidden right at the top and you cannot get enough turn on the spanner. What I need is a stubby 13. But both of my 13s I've got here are not stubby. Uh, hopefully there's no other pipes that are leaking and this one is good as well. So let's get in there and pump the pedal a couple of times. It's not going to be a firm pedal because I haven't bled it yet. Oh, it's quite firm. Is anything falling out the bottom of the car now I've pressurised the system? I'm expecting a couple of dribbles maybe, but... Hopefully nothing more than that. Well, that looks dry. Yep, that's good. And, oops, this one also looks dry, hooray. So we no longer have leaky brakes. So we've got good ones just there. And we have got good ones just there. Excellent. It's too cold to worry about bleeding them. Uh, I do need to leave them. The bleed nipples soaking in uh, Bulldog until tomorrow. It's, look how cold it is. The Crown Vic hasn't even defrosted at any point today. That's how chilly it is. Now I can just quickly change the cabin filter. This will hopefully only take a couple of minutes because there are just two Phillips head screws, two Torx screws, and then we lift the whole thing out in one easy move. 
I want to do this because I expect it's going to be full of mould and disgustingness and I can't run the interior vapour bomb until I've done it. OK, I'm going to have to call it a day at this point. It's only four o'clock, but it is getting dark, as you can probably see, and it's also unbelievably cold. If it's not actually zero, it's certainly getting very close to it, and it really is just too cold to hold spanners and things anymore. It's just freezing, but it's been a fairly productive day, although it's been a lot of faffing. I don't know why the car wouldn't start first thing in the morning. I don't know why it wouldn't let me in first in the morning. I thought it was frozen locks, but it seems like it deadlocked itself and didn't want to undeadlock, so I'm not going to lock it tonight because that's just a pain I don't need in the morning. And I'm wondering if that deadlocking situation is why it wouldn't start the fuel pump. Uh, anyway, I'm going to play with that game another day when it's not ice cold. Uh, we've done a bit though, we've replaced the leaking uh, brake line, so hopefully when we uh, go over to the barn and go and get the easy bleed kit, we can actually bleed this out and have functioning brakes again. Sorry you didn't get another driving bit at the end of this one, but you know, we can't, still can't stop the car, <laughs> but I'm sure it'll be fine soon. Done the fuel pipe. Uh, Done the fuel filter, which I wasn't sure I was going to bother doing, but definitely worth doing. Done the cabin filter, which is also definitely worth doing. And we're prepared to do the oil and filter. What we've spent today has been negligible, to be honest. Um, about a metre of uh, cunifer pipe, which is about a pound or two. A few connectors, which is, again, the fuel filter was just six pounds, and so was the cabin filter. That's like 12 quid combined. The oil filter, which we haven't fitted yet, was only four pounds. I've got plenty of 10W40 over in the garage, which I'm sure that's what this takes. Um, so that's basically a freebie. And the only thing that's really going to cost a lot is the um, coolant, which is 18 pounds, which is surprisingly expensive in comparison to everything else. Although I haven't actually worked out how you drain this, the old system yet. Normally there's either a an easily visible radiator pipe you can unclamp and just dump all the fluid out or there's a drain tap but I can't see either of them easily at this point in time so we might have to well definitely revisit it in the light but yeah we are certainly closing in on getting an MO2 the plan now is to bleed the brakes do the coolant and the oil which will not take very long and then take it around for an MOT and while it's in for the MOT I'll go and collect the new tires and hopefully we'll be able to pass those old crack things with an advisory on age, but certainly they're good enough on tread that it should get through. And then once I get the car home, I can stick a new set of tyres on there. Butter being Robert's your father's brother, we are good to go. Now, let's see if this thing will start up again and let me park it, or am I going to have to go and jury rig the fuel pump one more time? All right, just lock it and unlock it because I think that does stuff with the alarm. It's a no. Okay, the pump is now connected up again the old-fashioned way, by old-fashioned I mean by a battery in the back seat. That's something else I'm going to have to look at because I can't MOT it that way. I'm pretty sure that's a fail. It's really hard to see out of this car because the windows that are clear enough to see through are also completely uh, covered in goop and ice. The back window still hasn't de-iced all day. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the third, no, fourth episode in fixing the Mondeo in a week, which is obviously taking longer than a week, but we are very, very close to having this as a running, driving, MOT'd on the road car, a, a viable machine for transport again, which I'm hoping is gonna find a good home with a happy family who will appreciate it and love it very soon indeed. Right, okay, I'm gonna... thank you for watching, like, subscribe, you know the routine, and see me again next time. Well, I may be on this car, I may be on the Mercedes, depends what the weather does and depends what this car does. Radio, see you later.